Hey, Rob here for Quadratech.com. Today we're checking out the Quadratech Stealth 50 inch LED light bar designed for the 2018 and newer Jeep Wrangler JL as well as the 2020 and newer Jeep Gladiator JT. Now, the Stealth light bar offers a number of advantages over a more traditional exterior mounted light bar. For starters, because this light bar has been designed to mount on the inside of the windshield of our Jeep, well, it means that it's not going to affect the aerodynamics of our Jeep vehicle in any way. That means it's not going to change the air flowing over our Jeep, creating any unwanted wind turbulence that could cause some buffeting in our soft top. It also means we're not going to get any unwanted wind noise or whistling from a light bar mounted on the outside of our Jeep. Now, in addition to that, we don't have the need to mount any kind of exterior brackets to hold that light bar, which means we're not bolting anything to the windshield frame or the A-pillar of our Jeep that not only can look bulky, but can also get caught up on tree branches and limbs when we're off road. Now, because of the way that the light bar has been designed to mount to the windshield frame inside of the JL and the JT, we still retain the ability to fold our windshield for that really unique and incredible off road driving experience. The Stealth light bar features 150 watts of output. That's over 10,000 lumens of light spread over a 90 degree pattern. That means it's going to do a great job at not only illuminating the trail in front of your Jeep, but to the left and right as well, creating a safer and more enjoyable off-road nighttime driving experience. Now, with all of those features, you would think that would be enough, but we didn't just stop there. The Quadratech Stealth light bar is actually a dual function light bar that uses 60 amber LEDs or 60 hyper white LEDs for dual output. Now there's a three position switch that controls that mounted right above the driver's seat for easy access. And because that switch is mounted right on the light bar itself, well, it makes for an extremely easy install of the Stealth light bar. In fact, why don't we go ahead and back up a few steps and I'll show you just how easy it is to get it installed in your Jeep right now. Now you're gonna need a few tools to get the light bar installed inside of your vehicle. A nylon panel tool will come in handy to help you disassemble the interior without damaging or scratching any of the panels. You will also need a Phillips head screwdriver as well as a very small flathead screwdriver, a socket wrench or an impact driver, as well as a 10 millimeter socket and a T40 Torx bit. Now a small extension can also be helpful. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and get our climate control panel removed from the Jeep now my Gladiator happens to have the Alpine X409 installed in the dash, so before we can get that panel, we actually need to go ahead and pull the trim surround off of the X409. Now if you have a factory radio installed in your Wrangler or Gladiator, this is going to be your first step here, pulling off the climate control panel. Now starting at the side closest to the glove box, this is simply held in place by a couple clips, so we can go ahead and pull on that. This is where that panel tool can come in handy, helping you get behind the panel, pull it off. Now we have two electrical connectors on the back side, one on the back side of the climate control panel and one on the back side of the start stop button. Next up, we need to remove the Phillips screw on top of our window switches. And now we can remove the window switch panel and media center. Again, held in place by a few clips. Simply pull the panel out. And at this point, we do not need to disconnect everything on the back side of this panel because the only thing that we're going to be working with here is our 12 volt accessory outlet. You simply unplug that. To remove the glove box, start by opening the glove box, then lift up on the soft open support and pull towards the center of the vehicle to unlatch it. Then you can lift up on the glove box retainer pushing up, pulling the glove box down, and dropping it out of the way. Now that we have the glove box out of the way, we can go ahead and grab our accessory T-harness. Now this is gonna plug in place in between the factory wiring and our accessory outlet. We can plug the large white plug into the factory wiring, and the gray plug will plug into the backside of our outlet. And then we can go ahead and fish the other end of the power tap behind the dash. And we're gonna leave it right there behind the glove box 
for the time being. We're going to come back to that and connect our power wires for the light bar once it's installed. At this point, we can go ahead and reassemble the center dash section of our Jeep, making sure to reconnect all the electrical harnesses that we disconnected and reinstall all the screws, pushing everything back into place. Using your nylon panel tool, go ahead and remove the tweeter cover on the passenger side. Followed by the two screw covers on the A-pillar grab handle. And now using your 10 millimeter socket, and wrench or impact driver, remove the two 10 millimeter bolts holding the A-pillar trim in place. Now grab the A-pillar handle and pull towards you to release the clips and remove the panel. Now we need to go ahead and fold our visors out of the way and we're going to be removing two bolts on the soft top and hard top latches right here on the inside of the windshield. There's one here on the driver's side, there's another here behind the passenger side visor. Before we remove these bolts, there are two felt covers here on the bolts securing the windshield latch points. Go ahead and simply peel those off. We can set these aside and reinstall them when we're done. Now we can remove the two T40 Torx bolts. Now with the latch point removed, we can go ahead and grab one of our new mounting brackets. Now if you'll notice, the mounting bracket has two oblong skinny holes and two oblong larger holes. The larger hole is going to line up with our windshield latch bracket. and We're going to be reusing the factory hardware through our bracket and the existing factory bracket. And we can reinstall that to the windshield frame. Now we're going to leave these loose at this point. Go ahead and do the same thing on the passenger side. Now before we grab the light bar and install it on the inside of our windshield here, because we are going to be pushing that all the way up tight against the glass, I recommend going ahead, give them your windshield a nice good clean before we install the bar. Now we can go ahead and grab the stuffed light bar, but before we push it up against the windshield, you want to make sure that both the leading edge gasket as well as the top edge gasket are securely pushed in place and be sure that both of the side edge gaskets are in place as well. We can go ahead and drape the wiring towards the passenger side of the light bar and then tilt it at about a 45 degree angle to get it past the A-pillar roll bar. Slide it up into place, aligning the holes with the brackets that we loosely secured and install each of the four T40 Torx bolts loosely to hold it in place. Uh, if you'd like to wrap your wiring with electrical tape or Tessa tape, now is a great time to go ahead and do that. Before we tighten anything down, we need to go ahead and run our wiring down the A-pillar so that we can reinstall the trim and then come back and tighten everything, which should drop it out down right in behind the glove box. I like to secure the wiring Along the factory wiring, there's a nice little cable tray right here that will keep the wiring away from the bolt location. And again, I can secure it down here. We can reinstall the A-pillar trim, tucking it down behind the dash and slipping it up over the light bar, making sure that you don't dislodge the weather stripping. If you need to use your nylon panel tool, to push that weather stripping back into place. This is a great way to do it. Resecure the A-pillar with the two 10 millimeter bolts. And then reinstall both bolt covers. And then go ahead and reinstall the tweeter cover. Next, we can go ahead and make our electrical connection here behind the glove box. You wanna grab the two wires that we fished down from the light bar and our terminal block and our accessory wiring harness match the red wire to the red wire and the black to the brown, insert them in the side of the terminal block, and then tighten them down with that small flathead screwdriver. Once your wires are secure, you can go ahead and tuck them up behind the glove box, and we can reinstall the glove box. Now we can go ahead and push the light bar mounting bracket all the way towards the front of the vehicle until it touches the plastic windshield surround trim. 
and we can tighten the two factory T40 bolts. Now there is going to be some adjustment here in your factory soft top and hard top freedom panel latch point. So you may need to loosen and tighten them just a few times until you get these in the correct position. Now the last step is to go ahead and push up on the light bar, pushing it up tight against the windshield surround trim and the glass. And then we can tighten the two T40 Torx bolts on each side. Now you wanna make sure you don't over tighten those bolts. Maximum torque on those is gonna be 25 foot pounds. Now that takes care of the installation of our QuadraTech 50 inch Stealth LED light bar. If you guys wanna pick up one for your 2018 or newer Jeep Wrangler JL or your 2020 or newer Jeep Gladiator JT, you can click on that info button to head over to QuadraTech.com. Of course, if you have any more questions or comments about the light bar or how to get it installed in your Jeep, you can always leave those for us in the comment section below or contact us directly at any of the options on the screen. And you'll definitely wanna hit that subscribe button so you're sure to catch all of our latest product reviews and installation videos. Till next time, I'm Rob, I'll see you guys out on the trail.